Hello and welcome to Tech Lightning. In this short but concise video, I will explain a major design decision that you have to take at some point. Should you go for a single or multiple tenant? Well, how about we find out? So stay tuned, here we go. Before we start talking about a tenant, it's important to know the different type of clouds within Microsoft. There are about six clouds, and each of these more or less make use of the same Microsoft tenant. What is a tenant? Well, I'm actually glad I asked myself this question, as I can now tell you about it. A tenant within Microsoft is one instance of Azure AD. Usually an organization, they have one tenant, which is used by all the different clouds within Microsoft as seen on the picture, such as Microsoft 365 for workplace services. If we then look at the Azure Enterprise Landing Zone architecture, we will see the details there. From this, we can then draw the line to what belongs to the tenant and what is strictly only Azure. If we continue to drill down to a more simplified drawing, you can see that the Azure AD tenant is at the top. Don't be fooled by the name of Azure AD. It's still the same tenant used for all the different Microsoft clouds. You can consider the Azure subscriptions as trusting this tenant. Having seen this, should an organization use single or multiple tenants? The official recommendation from Microsoft is to use one tenant per organization. There are customers who have successfully implemented a multi-tenant system, but the general approach and what we see lately is the move towards only one tenant. The question regarding this, if you should go for single or multiple tenants, they do come up from time to time. Usually it's from customers who wants to have one party to manage the tenant and another one to manage the Azure part. However, the recommendation of a single tenant still remains. As we saw in the drawing, licensing is set per subscription and not per tenant level. So you can have a mix of subscriptions which are EA, CSP and pay as you go from different vendors. However, there are some things which should be considered if you go for only a single tenant setup. With a single tenant setup, I also refer to having another party who handles your tenant while your super IT team is responsible for Azure. Some of the benefits with a single tenant in this case is always there's a single Microsoft Cloud identity for all the users. The UPN remains the same as the email address. This allows for reduced complexity and interoperability between all the Microsoft Clouds. This then of course translates to less IT expenditure as it's easier to manage and get a grasp on only one tenant. Let's think about some reasons to go for a multi-tenant solution. Create an extra tenant if you want to temporarily do some testing or development on that level. There might be plans in the future that you don't want to mention to separate or spin off from the original company. If you're going to make use of Azure AD B2C, then you require a separate tenant. B2C is business to customers. That means your customer can use their own social media accounts to get access to your application and authenticate to your APIs. Also, scenarios where you cannot use your company name as brand identity for your applications. Here are some considerations to keep in mind if you decide to go for a single tenant solution where you have a different party managing Azure and another party managing Azure AD. Keep in mind, the owners of the tenants are also global administrators. Global administrators are able to grant themselves right on Azure subscriptions. You cannot prevent this and the only way to mitigate it is by the use of PIM and auditing the logs. To make it clear, Global administrators, they do not immediately have access to all your subscriptions. 
They can, however, elevate their privileges to what is called user access administrator and get access that way to your subscriptions. A user can only be synced to one tenant. Let's say you have one tenant for Microsoft 365 where you have the workplace services and you have one tenant for Azure. In Azure, you would then have to use B2B, business to business user, which are then flags as guest users in your Azure tenant. You may run into limitations that normal users would not have. Guest users are not normal users, and there's certain differences between those. That was a lot of information. In case you didn't pay attention and you had no idea what I was talking about, just remember this. Microsoft recommendations is one tenant per organization. So, until next time, good luck, see ya.